Hi everyone, it's Laura here from makingcardsistun.com and welcome to another card making video tutorial. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe and click that bell icon to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to create a long sequin shaker card featuring the birthday bash stamp and die cut set from Mama Elephant. Let's get started. To create this long card, I'm starting out with a Nina Solarwise 110 pound card base and I cut this to 7 inch by 9 inch. So I scored that at 3.5 so that my finished card would measure 3.5 inch by 9 inch. Then I also cut a piece of white cardstock to 8 inch by three and a half so I could stamp my image from the birthday bash stamp set from Mama Elephant on there. I'm using some Memento Textile Black ink to ink that up and then I am stamping it. When I ordered this stamp set I just couldn't wait to stamp this um, big design and to color it with the Copic markers. In total I spent about 45 minutes to an hour on this entire image but I just absolutely loved coloring it because I just really love these adorable critters and then the presents and the party hats and all that stuff it's just simply adorable. So I just colored that cat using YR27, YR24 and YR21 and then for this adorable little bird I used Y19, Y18 and Y13. For this dog, I'm going to use some shades of brown. I'm using E27, E57 and E55. And just like I did with the cat, I'm going to go back in with that darkest color just to add a little bit of details here and there. So for the dog, I added some um, spots and then for the cat, I, used, I added some stripes. To color this adorable little mouse, I'm using N4, N2 and N one and then for this bunny I'm using E55, E53 and E51. Now that I colored all of my little critters it's time to color the other images. For those little stars on the party hats I'm using Y04 and Y000 and then for the turquoise gifts I'm using BG13, BG32 and BG11. Then I am using the lightest color to color the other parts of those presents and I'll be doing that for each color. So I just wanted to mention that I want to create a sequin shaker card using the stamp and the coordinating die and I actually I have never done that before, so when I started making this card, I pretty much had no idea what I was doing. I was just, you know, going with it and I took some fun foam and some acetate and the usual stuff that I use to create a sequin shaker card. But when you're using the coordinating die of a, of a stamp set, it's actually a little bit harder since everything has to line up. So when I finished this card, I just noticed that there is actually a video tutorial from Jennifer McGuire on how to make sequin shakers using the stamp and the coordinating dies. So of course I just should have looked it up before making this card so I could actually share some really helpful tips with you guys. Um, but you know, in the end I still want to show you that you know, even though I make YouTube videos and card making video tutorials, it's still a trial and error process for me whenever I make a card. And I make a ton of mistakes, but I don't usually show them on camera. So it looks like I always know what I'm doing and I have everything planned out. While in reality, I usually don't plan a lot of stuff out whenever I am going to be filming a card making video tutorial. So anyway, back to that coloring. I just finished coloring this entire image. I always showed the colors that I use, so normally everything should be clear, but if you have any questions, make sure to send me an email or leave a comment below. 
So to create this uh, window for my shaker card, I took a piece of white Nina cardstock and I cut that to three and a half of an inch by nine, and then I just die cut the large uh, design out of it to create my shaker window. I wanted to add some color, so I'm using my Spun Sugar Distress Oxide ink and I am blending that in. So I am applying it heavily on the bottom of the cardstock and then just blending my way up and I'm kind of letting that fade out to create an airbrushed ombre effect. To add some extra detail to this piece, I sprayed some water in my hand and then I am flicking on some water splatters on this cardstock. Okay, so I just took a piece of acetate uh, paper, or just, you know, acetate, um, and I also cut that to 3.5 by 9 inch, and then I am applying some liquid glue to the back of my shaker window. I am using the Tonic Studios Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, as well as the Tonic Studios Smooth Precision Glue Pen to add the adhesive. So then I am lining up my acetate piece perfectly with this card base and then I am carefully, um, you know, adhering the acetate on the cardstock. Next, I'm going to use some fun foam as well as that coordinating die. So as you can see, I just kind of eyeballed where to die cut this piece. Um, so I die cut that twice out of fun foam because I'll be doubling up these layers so that the sequins will have plenty of room to shake and move around. So I just applied some more of that Tonic Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive, then I'm lining up these two pieces and adhering them on top of each other. Then I lined that up with my shaker window with the cardstock piece and I noticed that I didn't really um, measured this out enough so it didn't um, line up perfectly so I just had to cut that a little bit smaller using my scissors and you know it's okay to do it this way um, it definitely works well but there are easier ways to do this I think so yeah I think I'll be watching Jennifer McGuire's video and then um, I'll try it again Okay, so I lined up my fun foam piece and I adhered it on my note card on the standard, uh, no, it's not a standard size note card, on my note card that measures 9 inch by 3.5 and, and then I mixed some sequins. I used some Tripping Posh clear sequins, some pink sequins and also some of these adorable sprinkles and confetti sequins from Little Things from Lucy's Cards. It's time to close up the sequin shaker, so I'm using some liquid adhesive as well as my ADG from Scotch. But then I closed up my shaker and I started shaking it and I didn't like it. Um, there were too many sequins in there and you couldn't really see the image. So I opened up my shaker again. Thankfully, the liquid glue was still wet, so I was still able to do that. And then I used my tweezers to pick out the sequins that were too much one by one. So as I mentioned before, this card, I really wasn't sure what I was doing. Um, but in the end, it all worked out fine. And I don't think that the recipient will notice that I spent about three hours on this card and that you know so many things went wrong okay so for my sentiment I'm actually going to heat emboss that hooray greeting three times on a tiny little strip of white cardstock using opaque bright white embossing powder from wow by the way this is what this was my second attempt because at first I just stamped the hooray greeting with black ink on white cardstock and then I adhered it to the card and I didn't like it because I wanted my sentiment banner to match perfectly with the pink ink on this card. So, you know, that's what I did. So I heat embossed it and then I just used the Spun Sugar Distress Oxide ink to add some color. And now everything matches uh, perfectly together. After heat embossing that, I cut a V-shaped banner 
out of that strip of cardstock and I'm going to adhere my shaker piece on that tall card that I created earlier to finish it all off. And I'm also adhering my V-shaped banner on my shaker card using foam adhesive. So there you have it. I hope that this video was helpful to you. As I mentioned before, this probably isn't the easiest or you know the simplest way to create a card like this um, but you know we're all here to learn so thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon bye bye